Let's talk about building a durable drone because we all crash, right? Roll the crash footage. Uh. That was some bad crashes. So what did I do to make my drone durable to handle those crashes and more? So there's four main areas. So you get your frame, you get the electronics, akin to the electronics, you've got your battery, and then you have your antennas. We'll start with frame. The key thing with the frame, in my experience, is you want to protect the arms, particularly the ends of the arms, because what will happen if you don't protect the ends of the arms is the ends will take a bunch of abuse, and then what will happen is eventually this kind of keeps coming back, and these end pieces on your, your, uh, your frame, they protect the motor. Well, when you crash enough times and you're breaking, you know, hitting that, that carbon, it's going to start bending, it's going to come up a little bit, it's going to you know, curve, it's going to do all those kind of things, and eventually your motor is going to take a hit. So what do I do to protect the ends? I've got uh, two parts here. One, I've got the landing skids. That go underneath here that protects the screws protects the bottom whenever you come down for landings whatever and then this end piece which goes over top of it um, comes around wraps around that skid there and then protects all of the end and so if i take hits it's the tpu that's taking the hit and eventually the tpu wears out and you just replace the tpu print another one pop it on there you're good to go the carbon doesn't get damaged up under it unless you let the tpu get too bad then it will so you've got to be aware of that the next thing with the uh, frame is you've got um, some TPU here in the front, this particular case here, this is for a different purpose, but this particular piece here also provides a little bit of protection in the front here, keeps this front from getting hit directly as much. Um, it's not its main purpose, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, you don't want these screws to come out. So, and you don't want the screws to get damaged to where you can't take them out in the event that you've got to replace stuff. So there's, there's two parts to that. One, I replace all of the screws that I get with frames because most of them come with aluminum screws to save weight. I don't like aluminum screws, so I replace them with steel screws. The other thing is I want my screws to have this little hex socket. And the reason that I like those is they are far more durable. And whenever you have a problem, if, like if you scrape them, you know, they, they skid on the ground, they take a hit or whatever, you can still get your socket done in there and take it out and be able to get it loose. The last thing that you want to do with your screws, particularly the, well, only for the screws that are going in the metal, is you want to apply Loctite, blue Loctite, to these screws that are going in the metal. So on these screws that are going into the standoffs here, I put a little bit of Loctite on the end, screw those in, that keeps vibrations from having the screw come out. Now, you don't necessarily have to do the Loctite. For most builds that I do, I generally don't apply Loctite, but I find that if you do, it works way better, particularly for these, these standoffs. Um, because if you crash a lot, your props are going to get bent, damaged, like this. And if you're trying to fly back to yourself or whatever, or you're flying with damaged props that are bent or whatever, there's going to be a lot of vibrations. Those vibrations cause screws to come out. When screws come out, things fall apart. You crash. It's not a good day. So apply some blue Loctite to your screws that are going into metal and use the the hex socket screws instead of the button head screws and you'll have a lot, lot more durability. Next up is your LiPo battery. You definitely gotta have juice to fly and if your battery gets damaged or comes loose, you may lose your drone and be able to not be able to get it back and you definitely don't want that to happen. So um, a couple things to do with that. The first is with the connection here that is um, going to your battery. Make sure you've got some slack in there and ideally, you want to zip tie it to something like here. I don't have my zip tie on there. I took it off because I was doing some other work on it the other day. And I forgot to put it back. But you should have a zip tie on there. And what that'll do is that gives some strain relief. So if it gets pulled or whatever, it'll pull on this and not pull down in here where the wires solder to your ESC. And then you won't have you know, damage there. Um, so that's the first thing. Make sure you got some slack there because you want to be able to have a little bit of movement if you need to. 
um, and then put a little bit of strain relief on there and that'll protect that. Now the other part is you want to protect the battery itself. So what I do is I've got this top piece here that goes over top of the battery and male TPU and the strap goes through it and holds down over top of it and that protects the battery in the event that you crash. Lay on top, take a hit, whatever. Um, a big chunk of the battery is protected by this. And of course you've got your a little sticky pad up under there. It keeps the battery from sliding around. The other thing that you do is I put the, the LiPo um, plug up toward the front to where it's not going to like go forward. It's not going to pull loose. I used to run this one like on top of here and then I would have the battery uh, come out the back of it here and then plug in there. And what happened a lot of times is the battery would come disconnected and crashes. So I've since started turning the battery around. I put the, the plug on the front here. So now if it's in crashes, the battery doesn't get, the plug doesn't get pulled on it and doesn't come loose and so you don't lose power. That brings us to the antennas. What I've done on mine, uh, I'm running the DJI 03 and so it's got basically one antenna. Well, there's two, but it's basically combined in this one antenna. So my antenna is basically encased in TPU and then on the end here, um, where it kind of comes around there, I put this shrink wrap and this shrink wrap has adhesive inside of it. Interestingly enough, it's, it's part of the, the shrink wrap itself. It's one of the, the features. But so it goes around there and then it's got this adhesive as when you heat it up, it shrinks and then this adhesive kind of sticks on there and it keeps this from being pulled loose from it and provides a lot of durability. And it's made a huge, huge, huge difference in this thing handling crashes. The antenna for the receiver, you can put your receiver antennas in a lot of ways. And depending on what you're running, um, you may or may not need to do this. If you're running ELRS, um, You'll likely have very small antennas or maybe one of the ceramic antennas that's like down inside there and you really wouldn't even have this issue so you can skip ahead if you want but if you've got antennas that are sticking out the best location for them is in the middle of the frame up under it here with the little antenna sticking out either side in my case i'm running crossfire these antennas are huge so you definitely want to do this this is by far the most durable and protected location on your frame i have put my antennas in the front. I've put them in the back. I've put them off of the arm. I've, I've done the little L thing with them that still does coming off of the back. All kinds of different ways of running antennas. This by far is the most durable and provides really good reception because it gets the antenna away from the frame and it's in an area that's generally visible. No matter which way your drone is turned, you will see the antenna and it won't be blocked by the frame, at least not entirely. So Definitely, definitely this. Now what I did in my particular case here for mounting it, I designed this little TPU thing that utilizes the holes on the bottom of the frame here. It holds this thing in, it's not coming out, there's no way for it to come out. And it provides a little slot here to run the wire for the antenna down and then out the side over here and then right up. And that keeps that an antenna cable really protected um, and then it's got a little bit of play here for the antenna, so the antenna's not like under strain. If it gets bumped or whatever, it's not under strain, so it doesn't really get damaged. I've crashed and crashed and crashed this thing. Look, the antenna still basically looks like new. And I have crashed and crashed and crashed and crashed with it like this. It is great. Last, definitely not least, is your electronics and how to protect those. These are just some basic tips on things that you want to do. Number one, you want to waterproof all of your electronics. I'm using the FPV worry-free. It's super nice. It's easy to put on. It's not very expensive, durable. I haven't had any issues with heat. I fly here in Florida and no problems. I've heard people say that they have had issues with heat. I don't know what they were waterproofing. I'm waterproofing my ESC and my um, flight controller. I'm not waterproofing any of the other pieces, just those two main components because most of the other stuff is basically waterproof already or can handle a little bit of water. That works really great for me. You definitely want to waterproof your stuff. It's amazing how much water you can get just in some wet grass. Here in Florida, in the mornings, the dew is heavy. The grass is sopping wet. You will get water in there. I have fried electronics by doing that by not waterproofing. You definitely want to waterproof your electronics. Um, next thing goes along with the waterproofing. If you can, get you some of these little plugs that go inside of your USB ports. I've got one on the O3 and on my FC. I put those in there. That keeps water from getting inside of there um, and causing you a bad day um, later or you know whenever. So 
just a good thing to do. It protects that. You don't want, want, don't want water going in that way if you can. That really, really does help. Next up, your camera. Super important. Protect your camera. In this particular case, I've got this little TPU add-on for my O3 camera that provides wrapping around the whole lens there. It comes out, sticks out, and I have crashed and crashed and crashed. As you saw, bang the snot out of this thing, and this little sucker stays on here. I applied a little bit of glue to mine, so it's on there really good, but I can get it off if I really need to. And just keeps it in place, won't come off, protects that lens, super important, and protects the camera from like getting a, a direct hit too. Even if it didn't hit damage the lens, it might cause you know damage inside from impact or whatever, you know, shaking up. So that's one thing. The O3 has a really long cable. In my picture case, I don't need a very long cable to get back to where the O3 is located. So what I did was I designed this little piece here and it's got a little slot there and I'll run the cable down through that and that keeps the cable back in there and in between to where you don't um, have the cable get pulled out and get hit by the props or get yanked on or whatever else. This kind of holds that in there nicely. You don't necessarily have to do that but um, I have the ability to do that here and that keeps the cable out of the way. My receiver back here um, I've got a nice little, another little TPU print here, holds the receiver in place, keeps it from moving around, getting knocked around. I've had cases where the receiver's gotten yanked and, you know, the, the antenna wire got, got pulled off or the power wire got pulled off or whatever. This keeps this thing in place back here to where it can't move around um, and it's not like stuck in there. I just take some screws out, boom, comes right out, super nice. Again, that may not work for you, but just some general ideas. You want to kind of keep your receiver protected if you can. Keep it in position so it doesn't go flying around. One last item. Almost forgot. So I designed this mount to hold the O3 in place. This was what was causing my problem, if you follow the channel, with having my antenna get rip, get the, uh, the ends of the, the antenna going into the, uh, the O3 there, the air unit. They kept getting ripped out from the little UFL connector. The wires would get ripped out of the UFL connector. And the problem was, I was thinking it was the antenna getting moved around or whatever, but it wasn't the antenna. It was the O3 was moving. It was shifting forward and it was, you know, jerking on that and causing the problem. So I redesigned, um, well, basically took a design that they had, looked at it, got some ideas, and basically designed my own that wraps around this whole O3 all the way around, leaves a gap up under it so I can run my motor wires up under it and everything and run cables from the FC to the ESC up under it and gives me plenty of space there to do that and protects it, provides protection all the way around, but I can still access everything on it just like I need to. Again, all this stuff adds weight. This thing is not, not light by any stretch. It's like 321 grams all up. So it's a heavy three inch. Um, I like how it flies though, and I like the extra protection from from all that. If you have some other tips that you uh, that you do, things that you do that uh, has improved durability for you that I didn't mention or other ways of doing it, drop those down in the comments. I love hearing other ideas and stuff. So far, these are working great for me. Maybe you can take these ideas and apply them to your drone, whatever frame you're using, whatever build you're doing, however you're doing it. Tweak them and make them your own and uh, go out there and, and never stop flying, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.